Well, it's good to be back with you today and to share with you words from the Word. In our song, Our Great Savior, the third stanza says, Jesus, what a help in sorrow, while the billows over me roll. Even when my heart is breaking, He, my comfort, helps my soul. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah, what a friend. Saving, helping, keeping, loving. He is with me to the end. The songwriter knew what he was speaking about when he talked about his Savior is such a helper, a keeper, and a friend who will be with him to the end. And because of that, as his children, we can master every situation that comes to our lives. Why? Because the Apostle Paul reminded us in the book of Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 13, I can do, can do what Paul? All things. I can do all things. Paul, are you sure? Yes, I am sure. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. He's not saying in my strength, I can do all things. He said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Oh, when you become a child of God, God, the Holy Spirit, indwells you. Jesus Christ lives his life in and through you when you become a child of God. So as we look at some situations in Philippians chapter 4, that every believer could be victorious through Christ, Paul, he goes ahead and he names a few of them for us. Number one, let's see what he said in verse number 4 of Philippians chapter 4. First of all, he said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. What Paul is saying to me, what is he saying to you? He is saying, if we're going to master every situation, our attitude must be right. We must rejoice in the Lord always. We must be honest. This is a battle many of us fail in. Most of us rejoice when things are going well. We become sad, depressed, discouraged when things are not going well. But we are encouraged to rejoice at all times. We need to be like the psalmist. When he said in Psalms chapter 34 and verse 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Now, I know it is easy when God has answered a prayer, when God is blessing us. It is easy for us to rejoice and bless the Lord and give him praise and thanks. And sometimes I wonder if it is because of what he is doing. But notice what the psalmist said. I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times. I will bless him in sad times as in glad times. Bless him at all times. Every season. When we are well, bless the Lord. When we are sick, bless the Lord. When we don't have, bless the Lord. When we have a lot, bless the Lord. The psalmist said, at all times, I will bless the Lord. When you are tested, should you bless the Lord? What should you do when you are tested? James told us in James chapter 1 verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So what are you saying? I am saying what the Word of God is saying. When we find ourselves in different, various temptations, he said, count it all joy. Be joyful when you find yourself in these temptations. Be reminded, temptation is not sin. But it is when we yield to temptation, that is when 
we sin. So when you are tested, do what James said. When you are persecuted, Acts chapter 5 and verse 41 tells us something. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So if you are going to master every situation, the first thing that we need to master is to rejoice in the Lord all times. I am sure that you know of Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and verse number 12. What did he say? He said, Blessed are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So may I ask, have we mastered that situation yet when we are facing temptations, troubles? Do we rejoice? I know that's a situation that all of us, many of us, if not all of us, need to work on. So when you are persecuted, especially when this is done falsely, be like the church in the New Testament, they rejoice to know that they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ. When supplies are low, when you look in the cabinet and you don't know where the meal will come from for today, the man of Baca, led by the Holy Spirit, said something to us in chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Listen to these words. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fall, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no hood in the stall. Notice verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord and will joy in the God of my salvation. He said, you may have lost everything. You may have sown and haven't reaped anything. Instead of having a bad attitude about that, he said, we should have the attitude of rejoicing in the Lord, who is the joy of our salvation. We are to rejoice in the Lord always, but we must do it, not just say, I rejoice in the Lord, but we must do it exceedingly. Psalms 68 and verse 3, But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God, yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Could you imagine things are tough, and you are having it tough, and you are rejoicing, in the Lord. People would look at us and say, but he crazy. Something is wrong with him. Some would even say he pretending. He pretending that it is all right. Deep down inside, he is hurting. But you know, we don't have joy because of the things that we have. The things that we have may bring a little happiness now and again. But don't let our joy be based on anything that is given to us. Let our joy be based on the fact that we are in Christ and He is in us. Remember what He said in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. And that sometimes produces a problem. We, we are not content with the things that we have. We always want more. But even though we may not have all that we may want, he promised always to supply our needs. So the latter part of the verse says, For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So long as you are with Christ, he will never leave you. It will be up to you to leave him. And I trust that you would see that in Christ, you have so much to benefit from. And if you leave Christ, you have so much to lose. So he said to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. 
And if there is anybody that can supply our needs, it is God. He is the one that has all the riches. So Paul said, rejoice. Let me remind you of what the psalmist said in Psalms 37 and verse number 25. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed out begging bread. Hey, we can master every situation through Christ. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. And I say to you, if Paul can do it as a child of God, God expects us to do it also. My time is up. Lord, thank you for these wonderful promises. May you help us, dear God, to put these things in place so that we could master these situations that come in our lives. Change our attitudes or help us to walk on changing our attitudes and to become more joyful people with gratitude. Have your way with us now. We love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.